So this is going to be an introduction video for the animated render border add-on. And hopefully the questions I'll answer are why might we need it, what does it do, and how do we use it. So you can see I've got my very advanced scene here with my Suzanne monkey in the middle. And so I'll walk you through an example you may have come across. I think I want to preview it. So I'm just going to hit render. And you can see it starts rendering. And luckily, Suzanne is in the middle, so it's rendering the monkey first. But it's also rendering these other tiles, and I don't, I don't really need that because I only need Suzanne to render. So it's, it's wasting time rendering all the other parts of the image. So now it's done, and I think to myself, well, I don't want to wait 50 seconds each time it's going to do a render. And I know I could have cancelled it, but really I just want all the power focused on rendering this Suzanne monkey. So I'd go back to the 3D view and we can use a feature in Blender called the border render. So if I enable it, we get this red dotted line. And if I then press Control B, I can draw a box around the item I want rendered. So if I just go back to the image editor, I'm actually going to render this in a different slot so we can compare the renders. And if we render it again, we can see it's only going to render the Suzanne monkey. And it's obviously going to save a lot of time. You know, it's done already. So if we switch back to the other image using the J key, we can see that one took 50 seconds and this one was just five seconds. It's obviously a big improvement and it means I can preview my image really quickly because it's not rendering anything else. The trouble is that this Suzanne monkey is animated. And so if I think, well, I want to preview this, but I want to preview the whole animation, then I can no longer really use this border render. I could think about, you know, redrawing this every frame and saving it, but it's a very repetitive task. And so that means I can't really preview this object at final quality without rendering the rest of the objects in the scene, which is very annoying. And that's why I created this add-on. So I'm just going to go to File, User Preferences, and over to the Add-ons tab. I'm then going to Install from File, and you'll then want to browse to wherever you've got the add-on stored or downloaded, and we'll install it. And you can see it's installed the add-on, Animated Render Border. So I'll just enable it, and if we look at where it's going to appear, it says it's going to appear in the Properties area in the Render section. So I can close the user preferences now and over in the properties area, we're on the render tab. We have now got a new panel called animated render border. I'll just open that and enable it. So I'll explain some of these settings as we go. The first thing I'm going to do is because we're using an object, we're going to stay on this object setting and the object I want to track is Suzanne. And you can see our border render adjusted there. Now, if I scroll through the timeline, we can see our render border is now following our object. Now, one slight limitation of the first version of the add-on is that for both object and group tracking, which I'll mention later, you can only track mesh objects. So text objects or empties can't yet be tracked, though you could always parent a mesh to those objects and that would be tracked. There is a slight issue in that the box is very big around it. And we can adjust that by using this margin property. So this margin is used for expanding or contracting the border. So I could try contracting it a bit, and that's working a bit, but it's still not that accurate. And so we actually have another option we can use. And you can see at the minute, the use bounding box property is ticked. And if I hover over that, it says, use the object's bounding box, which is less reliable, but quicker, or the object's vertices for boundary checks. So I'm just going to enable draw bounding box. And this shows the box that's being used to calculate where the border should appear. And it's actually the same bounding box that's found in the object properties. It's just conveniently placed in this panel as well. And so we can see it's not really working. This uh, boundary box matched the boundaries of the mesh but from the camera perspective, it doesn't really work so well. So I can uncheck draw bounding box and I can uncheck use bounding box. So it analyzes the mesh vertices 
for hopefully a more accurate result. So you can see it's completely snapped to the object now, but it is going to be slower because it's analyzing all the vertices positions. And I'm actually going to increase the margin back up to three, just so we've got a nice border around our object. And again, we can scroll through and it's tracking our object. So that's really great. We can now render our whole animation at final quality, but only focus on the objects that matter for our preview render. So let's say we've got everything set up. We've got all our render settings set up. We're ready to do our preview render of just a Suzanne monkey. The one thing we need to note, and it's a bit of a limitation of the add-on at the minute, is that we can't use the normal animation render button up here. That won't work properly. All we have to do is use our custom animated render border button. So if we click this, it will come up with a window and it says, once the render has started, it cannot be easily stopped unless you close Blender. Make sure your work is saved if necessary. Press OK to render or press Escape on the keyboard to cancel. So that's a limitation of this add-on in that because we need to use a custom render operator, it will currently freeze until the rendering is done. And this limitation is something I'm going to try and look at in the future so that Blender won't lock up while you're rendering. But for the minute, that's unfortunately what's going to happen. So I'm just going to press escape and I'm going to save the work. And then you could press OK and it would render. I'm not going to do that now, but here's what the render looks like. So you can see that we're only focusing on the object and no other time is being wasted rendering all the surrounding areas. So right at the beginning, I mentioned that we were going to focus on object. But we've actually got another option here called group. So if I click that and if I scroll through, the tracking has now stopped because it's now on group uh, tracking and there's no group selected. And this option is for if you want to track multiple objects. So I'm going to bring back layer two where I have another animated object. So you can see this other object has a green outline showing it's in a group as does Suzanne, and I happen to know they're both part of the same group. So in this drop down box, we can choose that group and the border render has now updated. So it is encompassing both objects. So if I just scroll through, we can see our border is updating. And obviously in the middle, it is nearly rendering the whole image, but it's still optimized for the rest of the render. Unfortunately, the best solution for this case would be the ability to use multiple border renders. And that's unfortunately something that's going to have to wait for another add on. But at the minute, you can see it's optimized and in the same way, it will render just Suzanne and anything else in that group. There is another advantage to using this add on apart from the fact that we can focus just on our objects. So I'm going to select our Suzanne. I'm going to invert the selection with control I. And just to hide all these objects, I'm going to press Control H so they won't appear in the render. And I'm just going to turn off the border and render the full image again. And you can see, even though these parts of the image are transparent, it's still taking some time to render them. It is indeed very quick, but it took six seconds. So again, if I render into another slot, and you can also see that if border is disabled, as I disabled it, it will give a little warning because it does need it to be enabled. So we can just click fix and it re-enables it. I'm going to switch back to object tracking. So it's just tracking Suzanne. And if I render again into this other slot, you can see this one took two seconds because it wasn't rendering any of the transparent background. And this render took six seconds because it was rendering all these transparent tiles. Now, Obviously, that's not a huge time difference, you know, four seconds, that's not huge. But now imagine that you might be rendering thousands of frames for an animation. It could potentially save you quite a bit of time. Anyway, that's why I created this add-on, just to optimize my renders, because I was a bit tired of uh, watching the renderer rendering all this space that I didn't really care about. And I wanted to focus all my render power on the objects I was focusing on. So I hope this video has been helpful in explaining why we might need the animated render border, what it does, and how we might use it to our benefit. This add-on is now available for purchase over on the Blender Market.